Okay, update video on the four wheel drive conversion on the van. In the first video that I put out, I I guess I called it bolt on and that was true at least for that part, but this part was a little more involved. Uh, a lot of it was bolt in, but I wouldn't consider especially the rear axle to be bolt in. That was for sure more involved. Uh, so I'll, I'll show that off. It, it involved putting new spring perches and shock tabs and some tabs to hold the brake lines in place and things like that. Um, but I'll try to pick up where I left off last time, which was pretty much phase two of the conversion, uh, which is what I'm considering to be the drivetrain part of it. First video I had the suspension in the front and uh, now I've, I've, I'm almost done with the drivetrain, which would actually make this four wheel drive. What I lack right now is I have to re-gear this front axle. Uh, the rear axle I re-geared to a 430 gear ratio and this front axle has 331s in it. So I, I do have the gears and I just have to put them in. I actually have the gears and the new front drive shaft waiting to go in. Got a Detroit True Track and gears there. I just have to do it. And then this thing will actually be four wheel drive. But back to where we left off. I think in the uh, first video there, had a little question about the, uh, try to get some light in there, sorry. Had a little question about the uh, uh, steering stabilizer bracket. It was too weak, so I just kind of threw together this little bracket here that just strengthened it up some. It's been working out great. No problem since then. And on to the drivetrain part of it. Let me get down here. Kind of a tight fit. Okay. Um, we have a Borg Warner 1356 transfer case out of a Bronco. It has flanged outputs front and rear. I swapped a rear flange output onto the front of this instead of a yoke. The yoke that came on it had a 1330 U-joint. I wanted to run 1350 CV drive shafts front and rear. So they do fit. They're interchangeable front and rear, which was great. Just had to buy an extra. I chose this transfer case. I know I'm going to get questions on this. Why didn't I use an MV271? And on my van, I needed a cable driven speedometer. This transfer case has a cable driven speedometer right there. And that is why I chose a Borg Warner 1356. Bolts up to the E4OD transmission. I got the adapter there from Timberline Vans. It's a beautiful piece. It's made of billet, uh, machined, one piece. It's heavy duty, it's awesome, fits great. And then the extension housing from a 4R100 came with the adapter from Timberline. Um, so I just had to bolt it on and yeah, no actual rebuild of the transmission, which was, uh, I know a lot of people probably disagree with that, but you know, it was, it was like three grand to have the transmission rebuilt and well, it was already an expensive project. So here we are. Um, the shifter, I used parts from a 99 to 04 F250. Uh, the, the little shift mechanism up there and the bar that goes between the transfer case and there. And obviously, you can see I had to lengthen the, the linkage there, the bar that goes between them, because it was too short, but not a big deal. Just use a piece of 5 8 rod. And then, of course, the linkage up there just bolted right up, no problem. I did make my own shifter. I'll show you that in a minute. And then... I did a new transmission pan on mine because it was super leaky with the old cork gasket. So I used the updated 4R100 pan and rubber gasket, and now it doesn't leak. So that's awesome. Um, I did have to modify the transmission cross member. I had to drop it down. I just made some brackets and drilled a couple of holes. Dropped the transmission cross member, I want to say around two inches, if I remember correctly, because... Uh, the the mount transmission mount there is in a different position on the four-wheel drive extension housing 
Okay, so that's that. Um, speedometer cable for anyone that wants to know. I did, I had to have a custom cable made. That, that cable, the factory cable was too short. So I had a company, Commercial Speedometer in California. They made me that cable and I think it was like 120 bucks. So pretty reasonable and no problems there. All right rear axle I got the 1350 CV drive shaft here and then the rear axle I'm using the uh, sterling 10 and a half out of the 2012 super duty this was the matching axle for the front axle I got um, I did have to relocate spring perches and shock tabs those are different between the F-250s and the van, so that required some cutting and welding and whatnot. Uh, I did re-gear this axle. It had 331s in it, and I went to a 430 gear ratio. It's got disc brakes, which is nice. The old axle had drum brakes. This axle also has, oh, over here. This axle also has the factory locker. So you can see the green plug there for the factory e-locker. I don't have the wires hooked up for that yet. You may have noticed the little plug hanging on the other side, but I'll get there. Um, E-brake cable, just kind of had to reposition the cables and slightly modify the factory front cable for the e-brake. Uh, let me go around the other side here for show you the shifter. All right, so here inside the van, let me turn this light on. Got uh, some stuff. Here's my shifter. Uh, so just had to cut a hole in the floor and position it. I made a two-piece shifter, kind of like you join off-road uses, so you can unscrew this and take the top part off because these seats do swivel. And then I've got my bracket there that I made to hold my what will be the e-locker switch went with an old school switch thought it was fitting in the van i'm going to put four by four indicator and locker indicator lights in that panel as well and uh yeah so i think that's going to wrap up the update video it is almost four wheel drive you can get this front front axle re-geared get that drive shaft in and we'll be good to go